Uh, hello and welcome. This is uh, SFU uh, Math uh, 232. It's Brenda Davison. Uh, my intent today is to cover section 3.2, the uh, inverses and algebraic properties of matrices. So we saw the uh, trace and transpose near the end of the last lecture. And first we're going to start by just uh, seeing a few of the properties of the trace and the transpose. So what I'm going to encourage you to do <laughs> please take my encouragements to heart, uh, is to uh, take some of these theorems where we state the properties like the transpose of the transpose is the matrix itself, or for example, this one here, the um, A plus B transpose is the same as A transpose plus B transpose. Uh, what I recommend you do is uh, take examples just so you can see what's happening. So, uh, you know, just make an example ex take uh, a equals how about my famous matrix something like this something like that you take this and then just perform these operations i mean i guess for the second one you'll need a b so just take some a couple of random matrices i don't it doesn't matter ah. doesn't matter something like that uh, and then perform these operations on them and then make sure that it works and that also gives you practice with the with the uh, multiplication and, and taking the transpose and adding and subtracting it's good practice anyhow and then you can sort of verify these uh, these uh, statements uh, with an example that is of course not a proof but then sometimes what you can do is generalize your example into a proof you can you could do a transpose transpose equals a and you can see what's happening and then you could easily generalize that to a to an n by n matrix for example so or perhaps an n by m depending on whether a square matrix is required or not so you can you can use the one example and kind of run through watch what's happening watch what has to happen and then and then generalize it uh, i will uh, uh do a proof of the fifth one here which is actually not labeled five it's labeled e okay so we're gonna we're gonna prove that uh a b all transpose is b transpose a transpose okay the obvious thing to be very careful about is to notice that over here the order is different uh, over here it's a b and over here it's b transpose a transpose so the b and a have been um uh, turned around that is important note the order okay note I've got a problem sometimes with this thing moving a little bit when I don't expect it to. It must be pressing something or some mode or something that I'm in. Note the order. Okay, so let us uh, now take a, a, a look at proving uh, that AB transpose, so this is what I want to show, AB transpose is equal to B transpose a transpose that's what I'm going to try to show okay so uh, let us first check the size I mean they have to be of the same size on both sides otherwise it, it won't be true so let's check the size let's let's say if a is of size I'm not, I'm not going to specific specific size I'm going to say m by s uh, okay, so now we want to be able to multiply a times b. So then b is of size s by n. Okay, because we know that these two things have to agree. Uh, let me just highlight what has to agree. This and this have to be the same, or I'm not going to be able to even do a times b. Okay, then we, we can see that uh, a times b. This will then tell us that uh, AB uh, is of size M by N. Okay, now let's just check uh, what B transpose, A transpose, what the size of that is. Make sure that that works to start. Okay, so we've, we know what size uh, B is. So A transpose, uh, A and B, so then... Um, a transpose is of size s by m right because the rows have become the columns and the columns have become the rows and b transpose is of size n by s okay and then i'm going to do the same thing what does that mean b 
transpose times A transpose. Let's see, B transpose, this will be N by S, size N by S, multiplied size S by M, giving me, sorry, that's a by, by giving me the size, uh oh, something has gone wrong. S, sorry, this is, B transpose is of size N by S. Uh, A transpose is of size S by M. Maybe the problem is here. A, B, let's see. A, B. Oh, I understand. No, I just confused myself. It's okay. This is true. And that means that, sorry about that, a momentary confusion. Okay, I've sorted it out. <laughs> AB transpose is of size n by m. That's what I was seeing was happening here and I got confused. Okay, so this is the same. So size of, of uh, A transpose B, uh, A trans, A transpose, sorry, B transpose A transpose is of size n by m. Okay, so those agree. These two agree. I was originally thinking it had to agree with this and I thought something was wrong, but no, I just hadn't gone quite far enough on my size argument. So these two sizes that I've, I've, I've highlighted right here must be the same, and they are. Okay, so that is uh, um, required. You can also see at this point that uh, if it was A transpose times B transpose, it wouldn't work. So it, it can't be that. Okay, let's keep going. Let us take a look uh, at, let's start with the left-hand side. So I'm going to take uh, A, B, transpose, and I'm going to look at the uh, J, I element of that, and that is going to have to be equal to A, B, I, J. That's the definition of a transpose. Okay. All right. Then the next thing I'm going to say is that uh, A, B transpose J I is going to be equal to um, R I of A times C J of B. Okay, so that is the definition of the matrix multiplication A B. So this is a definition of matrix multiplication. Now let's take a look. Um, R I of A times column J of B is equal to this thing here, A I one, A I two, A I three dot dot dot, A I S the last one, multiplied by B I J. Sorry, it's not B I J. B one J. B1J times B2J dot 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 BSJ. Okay, and I can I can write that out. That looks like this. AI1 B1J plus AI2 B2J plus keep going uh, AIS BSJ. Okay, now I'm going to just take a look at, so this, let, let's be really clear here. This is, this is sort of the crux of the whole thing here. That is RI of A times CJ of B. Now I will take a look at what happens if I multiply RJ of B transpose multiplied by CI of A transpose. That is going to be, via that same argument, A well, let us be careful. Let me just write it this way first. B1, do I want to do that? Yes, B1J times AI1 plus B2J times 
AI2 plus, and I keep going, and I get to the end and I get BSJ times AIS. So, ah, no, this is BSJ. BSJ times I, AIS. This is a B. Okay. Now, regular multiplication is commutes. So if A and B are numbers, A and B are numbers, then A times B is equal to B times A. So these things are equal. I can just I, I just need to turn every turn I just need to turn each one of these around so that's going there that's all and that's going there otherwise than that they're identical so that tells me that uh, uh, these two things on this side are equal so this expression here is equal to that expression there okay so I knew that uh, um, uh, a B transpose uh, J I is equal to this thing and now I've showed that this thing is equal to this thing so now I can write this here R J of B transpose times C I of A transpose okay and what is that that is B transpose a transpose J I and over on this side it is still a B transpose of J I so you see that these two things are equal each element is has been shown to be equal that means that uh, a B transpose is B transpose a transpose and we are done Okay, so it's important, uh, you, you can't sort of, it doesn't work like an exponent, like you can't uh, distribute it in somehow like that. No, but please don't do that. You, they, they, the order has to be reversed when you remove the brackets. Okay, and you've seen the proof for that, so it's, that, that's a nice feature. You can see why that is true. Okay, so that is an important property of the uh, transpose. Let's look at a few other properties here of, of the trace, and then I guess also well, I think most of these are here. Oh yeah, there's there's transpose showing up here on, on part A too. So um, most of these are about the trace. So I'm going to um, refer you to the textbook here. They, they have some explanation about uh, why these must be the way they are. That's on page 105 of the Busby textbook. So again, what I'm asking is for you to take, let me just, uh, I, I made an example here myself. So take uh, A equals my famous A. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Take A, uh, take B. If you guys are using MATLAB, if anybody's using MATLAB, which you, which I would highly encourage, you can download it for free with your SFU ID. It's it's, it's a spectacular deal. MATLAB is uh, used widely in uh, science and engineering applications, so it's a good thing to have a bit of a handle on. Anyways, and it's not hard to like. Uh, sort of get going a little bit and what you can do is enter these matrices like you could enter a and b and then it will remember them just like a variable and then later an hour later next session whenever you could just say oh tell me what a transpose is oh multiply a times b for me oh multiply you know like that and you you could continue to use these matrices after entering them once you could continue to um, use them to experiment uh, and, and see how things are working and, and also do it quickly so that's a that's a possibility download matlab and just use the uh, command window and uh, learn how to enter a matrix. That's not hard. And then and then use that to save time. Uh, I just uh, you, I just sort of picked two matrices like that. And then um, what I think you should do is the same thing I said to to do last time. Compute um, A through E. Uh, and then and then uh, then generalize and generalize what you did to obtain a proof. Okay, so um, let's just let's just take an example. For example, part A that the trace of A transpose is equal to the trace of A. This is not surprising actually but let us take a look at it let us you we, we know what a is we, we i'm going to use this a right here and so let us just write out what a transpose is a transpose is one two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's A transpose. Now let's take a look at what the trace of A is. How do you calculate the trace? It's super straightforward. You add up the values on the diagonal. Okay, so the trace of A, the trace of A is 1 plus 5 plus 9 is 14. Now we look over here at the trace of A transpose, and we see that the trace of A transpose is also 14. Okay, it happened in this example, and it happened, uh, it will happen all the time. <clears throat> and you remember that you need to have a square matrix in order for it to make sense to calculate a trace. And so what you can see then is doing the transpose does not change the main diagonal. So you just sort of need to formalize that. What happened is the 1, the 5, and the 9 don't move when you um, when you do the transpose. Okay, so you need to, it does actually make that point clear when you make this calculation for the first time, and then you want to formalize that. So let me just write out what, what, what I'm saying here. Taking the transpose, does not change the main diagonal. Okay, so you do the rest. Work through them like that and then and then generalize. More practice is better. I don't think there's an upper bound either. Just keeps getting better and better and you just keep getting better and better and better. Okay. So we're just going to have here the properties of matrix addition and scalar multiplication. And these are the same as it was for the vectors. If you practice with the vectors, you understood that all, then we're sort of basically good here because they're the same. Okay, so the we're going to be very careful. Uh, so these ones here are uh, addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication. These are scalars. So it's scalar multiplication. I'm going to highlight that. That is a scalar times a matrix. These are all the same. Now, we're going to come to the big moment, and that is matrix multiplication. It's defined uh, in a different way than the vector dot product, so the properties are different. Okay, so let us just sh show that. Show. Uh, let me just, uh, well, we, we, we had the definition already, but let's, let's show some examples. We, didn't, we, we saw last lecture how to multiply. And we also saw that a b is not always equal to b a, or is in fact almost never equal to b a. But let us we're going to run through this again, and we're going to uh, we're going to notice uh, that in the case where uh, the dimensions even agree. Okay, so I'm going to calculate here a b, and that's going to be this guy here, zero two one minus one, and I'm going to multiply that by b one four minus two three, and uh, I'm hoping I'm I'm doing this without error. I do sometimes make arithmetic mistakes. I'm sure you can put a comment below if I if I did so. But I did this. I got this this these numbers here, and then I multiplied b times a. So this uh, opposite order that would be one four minus two three multiplied that by zero two one minus one, and I got over here four minus two three minus seven like that. And you can see, I mean, it's fairly obvious, these are not equal. So this is the big, big take home message here. B, A, A, B, not equal to B, A. This is different from numbers. I mean, you, if you, if you go like this, two times three, that is three times two. That always happens, right? You, you, regular multiplication is commutative. And what we're, what we've shown uh, here is, um, you, first, you can have a, a dimension problem, and you can't you can find AB, but you can't even compute BA. But even if you don't have a dimension problem, and you can compute both AB and BA, they are not necessarily equal. In fact, they will usually not be equal. Okay, let's hash this point home with another example. Okay, I'm going to calculate BC. BC is uh, B one four minus two three multiplied by c, 4 minus 6, 3, 1. I multiply those things. b, c, I get this uh, 7 minus 2, 1, and 15. And then I will calculate c, b, and that will be, first will be c, and next will be b, like that. 
I will do the multiplication and I will get this 16 minus 2, 1, and 15. Okay, again, another example, yeah, and I highly recommend, of course, like, uh, well, a bit, a bit late now hearing this, I guess, kind of, <laughs> but uh, should you, when you see these kind of examples, given this, calculate these four things, and, you, and you, you should think to yourself, oh, I know how to do this already, know how to calculate this, well, I'll stop the video, calculate it myself, and then, and then see what the results of my calculation are, and then see that you did it correctly. If you didn't, well, see if these answers agree. If they don't, that's a possibility you made a mistake or possibility I made a mistake. And then you can sort out which one it is and that will be a, a valuable uh, learning experience. And if it's something that you didn't understand and you made a mistake, then that's a total bonus because then you can fix that and then you won't, you won't have that confusion anymore. Okay, so there's BC not equal to CB. Big, big, big message, matrix multiplication, not commutative. So, so let's look at some of the properties of matrix multiplication. Okay, we have two matrices, A and B. There's no requirements for them to be uh, the same size, but it is, there are three possible ways uh, for them to not be equal. A, B is defined, but B, A is not. That's a possibility. We saw this last lecture. We saw, we saw this. Okay, they are both defined, uh, but they have different sizes. We haven't actually seen that one yet. Um, uh, and here we saw just we just saw this in the last slide. We saw this, this one, we saw this one. Uh, we saw that if they're both defined, they have the same size, but the products are not equal. So here's, a, here's just an example of the third possibility. Uh, we could have A uh, being a uh, two by three matrix, uh, B being a three by two matrix. So A and B are not the same size. And then I multiply A times B, so that would be a two by three times a three by two. What size will the product be? The product will be that guy times that guy, uh, two by two. And then I look at uh, BA, what size will that be? Well, BA will be when I have a three by two times a two by three. So that will be three by three. So make sure you can come up with these two numbers, make sure you understand what I'm doing there. But you can see here, if you agree with that, that AB is a different size matrix from BA. So there's no possibility of them being equal when they're not the same size. Okay, so some properties uh, of the um, matrices, and this is under the assumption that A, B, and C are such that the operations can be performed. So sometimes you could pick A, B, and C so that these operations don't make sense, and this theorem is uh, you know, doesn't tell you anything. So the 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 sizes of the matrices matrices are are such that the operations make sense. So here we have um, associativity. Uh, here we have a uh, uh, left and right uh, distribution uh, uh, of multiplication over addition. And here we have left and right distribution of multiplication over sub subtraction. And then here we have um, scalar associativity. Okay. We have already seen. Uh, looking at the transpose, we have already seen that A, B transpose, we've proved this, is B transpose, A transpose. So now we can use that coupled with these uh, things we have above in order to figure out what A, B, C transpose is. So this is how I'm going to think about this. I'm wondering, hey, what is A, B, C transpose? So what I'm going to do is think of this like this. A, B some matrix, the product AB, and then multiplied by C, because we know that we can do this. I mean, this one here is telling us ABC is AB times C, and that's also A times BC. Okay, it doesn't matter how I group them in order to do the multiplication. So I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to say I'm going to I'm going to be thinking of it this way. I'm going to I'm I'm going to multiply ABC and take the transpose. But what I'm actually going to be thinking first is I multiply AB, then I'm going to multiply by C, and then I'll be taking the transpose. But using this property right here, I can see that this is C transpose times AB transpose. Thinking of AB as a as a unit. Okay, but I already now know what that is. So that is uh, C transpose, B transpose, A transpose. And I have now expanded out uh, A, B, C, multiplied together, and then taking the transpose. 
okay, uh, a zero matrix. I mean, guess what? A matrix with all zeros is called a zero matrix. We didn't denote it by a, a zero. And sometimes if we want to be sure that we have a certain size, certain number of zeros in there, well, we can specify the size. Oftentimes what person will not specify the size and what they mean is make the zero matrix the right size uh, so that you can do what, whatever it is you're doing. So for example, here, if I left out this M by N and I was trying to add zero to A, I would basically assume that I had the right size matrix of zero so that I could pot properly add it to A. Okay, so there's a um, there's a uh, properties here. Uh, if you add zero, nothing happens. If you subtract zero, nothing happens. If you if you take a and add negative a to it, it you get zero. Um, zero times a is zero. Um, and if a scalar times a matrix scalar, be careful. Scalar times a matrix is zero. Then either the scalar is zero or the matrix is zero. However, careful, caution, okay? Be careful. Let us let us look at something that is different from what you uh, are, are used to. Okay, so let us just quickly uh, remind ourselves what we're used to. So now I'm talking about real numbers here in my uh, real numbers. So I'm thinking um, here, here's my case with real numbers. If AB equals AC, then if A is not zero, then um, b is equal to c, right? That means you can this cancellation property. You can go like that, unless a is zero. That doesn't make sense. But but if a is not zero, you can cancel the a on either side. That is not true uh, for matrix arithmetic. Okay, so the cancellation property does not hold. Not hold for matrix multiplication. Okay, so if I have matrices like this, A, B equals, um, doesn't really matter, I guess, uh, B, C, like that, I cannot, I will not claim that that means that A equals C, even if uh, B is non-zero. Okay, and that mustn't. That must. You must make that mistake. It's it, 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 you want to. You want. You do not want to be doing algebra with your matrices and accidentally cancel something out like this because then, well, everything that comes after that is incorrect. Okay, so let's uh, show this via an example. Let us. Uh, we've got three matrices here. First thing we're going to do is see does A B equal A C. Okay. So in this case, we're, we're, we're actually in this, we're, we're, we're doing it this way, like this was AC, and then thinking, like, does, does that happen? That's what we're going to, no, this is no, please don't think we can suddenly do this, no. Uh, but, uh, uh, so that's, that's the example of what we're doing here. So let's, let's do these computations in C. Okay, let, we, will, we will compute AB. Again, you could stop and do these computations yourself. It's always better to do stuff yourself than watching somebody else do it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do that multiplication. Uh, I get this like that. And then I'm going to do the next multiplication, A times C. And uh, that's going to look like this, A times C. And I get the same thing. Okay, so AB, I've concocted an example here where AB is equal to AC. But you can see that uh, A is not equal to zero. It's not equal to the zero matrix, the two by two zero matrix. And B is not equal to C. So the cancellation property uh, uh, d does not hold. Caution. Okay, let's look at some other types of matrices. Um, identity matrix. Uh, the identity matrix is a square matrix with ones on the ma main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And we denote that with an I. And sometimes we'll say I 
2 or I3 or whatever when we want to specify the size. But you usually do exactly the same thing. If you need the identity matrix, you write I, and it's assumed to be the right size for whatever problem it is that you're working with. Okay, so let's just uh, make that clear. We don't have to go 2 by 2 because they're square. So we just call it I2. That means 2 by 2. Uh, and that looks like this, 1, 0, 0, 1. So that's the identity matrix in uh, two dimensions. And then we have the identity matrix in three dimensions. Like that. Okay, that just keeps uh, uh, keeps um, going up, I, I4, I5, how, whatever, whatever you, that ever you want. Just let's notice a couple of things with the other things we've seen that the transpose of i is i, and that the trace of i n is equal to n. Okay, so you see trace of, uh, would just be adding those two things up, that adds up to two. Okay, so and that two is here. So that's the trace. Okay, so what it is, is uh, that the identity matrix is playing the role of one in regular arithmetic. Let's just uh, take a look at what the columns, what are the rows and columns. First of all, the rows are the same as the columns. I mean, that you, you know that uh, this statement actually tells you the rows and columns are identical. So the, um, let's just make a note of that. The rows of I n are equal to the columns of I n. Okay, and uh, we could see that in fact these whatever you take the rows or the columns. Let's just take the let's just take uh, I two as an example. We we have we end up with let's just take a look at the rows. Write the vectors like this. Write the two vectors. And what what do we get of the rows? We're actually getting the the unit vectors along the axes. So this would be x and this would be y. And we have here the vector uh, one uh, zero, and here we have the vector zero one. Okay, so let us just uh, uh, see uh, what what, uh, what I was saying earlier there that I n plays the role of one. So let's let, let us write that down. I n plays the role of one. So for example, with numbers, let, let this is what I'm meaning by this comment. With numbers, we have the fact that uh, a times one is equal to one times a, and that is equal to a. That's our numbers. And, and one is what we call the multiplicative identity. Uh, I n or I m, whatever size it is, is the multiplicative identity for matrix multiplication. So let us prove that, uh, uh, let us prove this one here, that, uh, we're going to take this and prove that that's equal to that. You can do the, the other way. I'll do it one way, and then you could you could follow that same logic and do this one. Okay, so where are we at here? We have a uh, m by n matrix, and we are going to multiply on the right by n by n matrix. And so we can see that these two match, and we, are, we will get a result here, a i, which will be of size m by n. Okay, that's a good start. If we want that to be equal to A, I mean, the size is going to have to be the same. So there, the size is the same. Okay, so let's, let us uh, now uh, move to show. So now my idea of what to do is to show, um, now I'm going to try to, I am going to show. I'm not just going to try, I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to show that A times I uh, is equal to A. Okay, so let us note first that i, whatever size we need, the i, let's, let us look at the, the entry in row i, column j. And that is going to be one of two possibilities. It's going to be a 1 or a 0, because that is all that is in that matrix is zeros and 1s. And it is 1 precisely when i is equal to j, and it is 0 if i is not equal to j. Okay, now let's take a look at that product a i n and we'll look at the i j element. And what does that, how do I compute that? 
Well, we've seen how to compute that just a little bit earlier. I wrote out those that those rows and columns and sort of wrote out the sum that we need to do. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Um, what we are doing is multiplying the i-th row times the j-th column. And I'm going to write it with summation notation this time. So what we're doing is taking the sum, I'm going to use as an index, the sum of k over k of a i k times i capital i k j okay see if you can do this see if you you can uh maybe write this out in longhand what does k do k goes from um one to n okay write it out maybe longhand or refer back to when i did it longhand and make sure you can just put it into the summation notation Okay, now let's take a look at uh, what this uh, means. This is going to be, I'm going to take the sum over k, all the k's from 1 to n. Let's just even do it like that, 1 to n. But I'm going to stipulate here uh, k not equal to j. Okay, that I'm going to take all of those ones. And then I'm going to take the uh, ones uh, from k equals 1 to n, and I'm going to take when k is equal to j, and that is uh, a i, still the same same thing here, k j. Okay, now let's take a look uh, at what this is, is telling us. Right here, this thing here, unless k is equal to j, which it's not, this thing is zero. So this whole thing is zero, because all of these entries are zero. So that's equal to zero. That's nice. And then looks over here. This is only one value. This summation only picks out one value when k is equal to j. And that is exactly when this number right here is one. So this is a i j. So we have shown that the i j entry of a times i n is the i j entry of a alone. And that, because we've done that, now that's true for every entry in both of those matrices, then that, that is, is exactly the same as saying uh, a i n is equal to a. So we see that no matter what matrix a we have, we multiply by the identity matrix, we get back the matrix we started with. That is exactly the role that one plays. Okay, just keeps getting better. Now that we've got the idea of a multiplicative inverse, uh, the, the, this, this element, I'm sorry, multiplicative identity, we've got the idea of a multiplicative identity, that allows us to talk about what the inverse is. Okay, so we're going to have a, we're going to start here with a square matrix, so it's n by n, so those, those two numbers are the same, it is square. So if there is a matrix B such that a b equals i and b a equals i, then b is called the inverse of a. If such a number exists, b is said to be invertible or non-singular. If, if we have a matrix a and we cannot find an inverse b, it, I shouldn't say we just couldn't find it, but there isn't one, maybe there, I mean, <laughs> you might be able to not find it, but there actually could still exist. So let us just say that uh, there isn't one, uh, and then that, when that happens, when a matrix A does not have an inverse, then we call it singular. That's that word right there, singular. Okay, uh, if B is an inverse of A, then A is an inverse of B. Okay, let us just, uh, we don't yet know how to find these things, and we're going to take a little bit of time uh, to uh, get to that position. But, but let us just say somebody said, here's some matrices, check that A and B are inverses of one another. So we'd say, okay, we want to know are A and B inverses. That means um, uh, does A times B equal I and does B times A equal I? So I'm going to go ahead with that. I'm going to just test it out. I have no idea how these A and Bs were uh, selected, but I, that doesn't matter right now. I'm just going to say, let me multiply together A and B. More chances to practice. Stop the video and tra practice your uh, matrix multiplication. The more times you do it, the better. Okay, so I'm going to write out the first entry in gory detail. I'm going here 5 times minus 3 plus 2 times 8. And uh, 
a little bit less detail here. This is minus 6 plus 6. This entry here, 40 minus 40. Please make sure that you can multiply together two matrices. You know exactly what you're doing. We're going to do this lots of times. Okay, it does. A times B is equal to I. Then I do the same thing, B times A. And I take these numbers. I multiply them together. Uh, and uh, so the, the, I'm here going minus 3 times 5 plus 2 times 8. And down here I'm doing 2 times 5 plus minus 5 times 2. Etc. Here I'm minus 24 plus 24. Here I'm 16 minus 15. And I make all those calculations and I get this. Okay, so A times B is equal to I and B times A is equal to I. And so we can then write that B is equal to A inverse. That's what this means inverse. And also a is equal to B inverse. Okay, this is inverse. That's not very good. Let me try that again. Inverse. Okay, I want to say something here because I have a slight pet peeve. This number equal to this. One half is the inverse of two. One half is the inverse of two because 2 times 1 half is equal to 1, and 1 is the multiplicative identity. I don't want to be thinking of this as a reciprocal. I know in this case it is, but if I don't think of it that way, if I think that this thing means the inverse, then I don't have this problem. Huh? That is the arc sign. That is the thing that, that is the inverse, the thing that, that when you take the Okay, so I'm going to say, uh, let me just do this, arc sine, because arc sine of sine of x is equal to x. Okay, so this we, we want to be properly thinking of what it means to be the inverse. It doesn't mean 1 over, definitely doesn't mean 1 over. It means, it means if I multiply those uh, uh, something by its inverse, I get an identity element. Okay, let us now take a look at... Uh, C. It says show that C is singular. Okay, so C singular means uh, C does not have an inverse. Does not. Okay, C singular means C does not have an inverse. Okay, I want to say something here. Let's 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 go on the side here on our numbers. Okay, imagine a number. Um, numbers. Um, okay, let A be a number. Okay. If A is not zero, then A has a multiplicative inverse. Okay, and, it's, and it happens to be 1 over a, because 1 over a times a is 1. That does not happen in the matrix land. In matrix land, you can have uh, non-zero matrices, like C is here, and it does not have an inverse. Okay, it's not zero, but it still does not have an inverse. Okay, so if C were to have an inverse, we would have something like this. C times C to the minus 1 is equal to i. So we were kind of wanting to know what is this, right? So we would uh, potentially write that like this. We would we would be thinking of it like this. Here's C, and we would be multiplying it by something. Let me just call it uh, D11, D12, D221, and D22, right? We would multiply it by some matrix, which we would try to figure out what those would be, and we would end up with this, 1, 0, 0, 1. That's what we would have if C had an inverse. Now let's take a look uh, at, uh, at uh, a couple of things that that would mean. I mean, that just by 
our ability to multiply matrices and compute things, we would be able to write out uh, actually four equations uh, with four unknowns right here. Um, 9d11 plus 7d21 would have to be equal to 1. And 9d12 uh, plus 7d22 would have to be equal to 0. Also, 0 d11 plus 0 d21 would have to be 0. That's fine. Because that's that it doesn't matter what values of d11 and d21 I have, that's 0. And also it would have to be the case that d12 plus sorry, 0 times d12 plus 0 times d22 would have to be equal to 1. This is not possible. Doesn't matter what you pick for d1 or d2, it's not possible. So you're not going to be able to find these two guys. Now, th there are no numbers to satisfy this. C does not have an inverse. We call it singular. It is singular. Okay. So as you're going through this, be, be keeping in the back of your mind, okay, what things are I can just port directly from how I'm used to dealing with numbers and the, everything is all kind of the same and what things are not the same and then make special note of those, the things that are not the same when you're doing uh, matrix arithmetic or matrix algebra. Okay, here's another theorem. Uh, if there is an inverse to a matrix A, it's unique. Okay, so let me just, that's what this is telling us here. An inverse is unique. So if one exists, it's unique. For example, the inverse of 2 in number land, the inverse of 2 is minus a half and not anything else. Okay, there's just one of them. This is also true uh, of a matrix. If, if it does exist, it doesn't have to exist, but if it does exist, then it is unique. Okay, so oftentimes a way to um, show that something is unique, you assume that there's more than one and then show that those two things actually have to be equal. And that's how we're going to proceed here. We're going to assume that A has two different uh, inverses, B1 and B2, and then we'll plot along and we'll show, oh, actually B1 has to be equal to B2. So that, that means if you've got an invertible matrix, it's unique. Okay, so we have, a, we've, we were, we're saying that uh, uh, B1 is an inverse of A. That means B1 times A is I, and B2 is an inverse of A. So that means B2 times A is also I. Okay, I'm going to take uh, B1A, and I'm going to multiply it by uh, B2. Uh, that is the, I'm multiplying on the right-hand side here. So that has got to be equal to I times B2. So I'm taking this 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 uh, statement right here. I'm multiplying on the right hand side by B2, and I times B2 is B2 because that's just multiplying by the identity. Okay, uh, let's think here. Uh, B1A times B2 is equal to uh, B1, let's think here, uh, oh, I see, uh, B1 times A, uh, B2, okay, uh, that is just my, uh, that is associativity, so first I hear I'm, I'm thinking of, multi of multiplying B1A and then multiplying by B2, and then over here I'm going to multiply A, B2 first, that's these two first, and then multiply by B1, okay. Uh, AB2 though is uh, AB2 is I because B2 is an inverse of A. So this is B1. Uh, but let's look over here on this side. Uh, B1A is also I because B1 is an inverse. So this means here IB2 is equal to B1. And that means that B2 is equal to B1. We're done. Okay, you cannot have uh, more than one. 
All right, so now we can uh, just den denote the inverse of a by a to the minus 1, because we don't have to worry about there being more than one of them. It is just going to be denoted a to the minus 1. Okay, so we're going to now take a look at a uh, theorem um, that is uh, if a and b are invertible uh, and they're square, I mean that they have to be, uh, of the same size, then a, b is also invertible and the inverse of the product a, b is equal to the product of b inverse times a inverse. So this is a similar uh, just to what we have seen with the, with the transpose. So let's just notice that similar to uh, AB transpose is equal to B transpose A transpose. We saw that already, where, where the order is important uh, when you decide to individually take the transpose and then, and then multiply. So let's uh, show that uh, if you take the inverse of the product AB, that you get uh, B inverse times A inverse. So the way we're going to start this is uh, by noting that uh, a times a inverse is equal to i. That's by definition of the inverse. Okay, and then I'm going to just simply notice that I could go like this and add i in here and nothing will change because I can just multiply by i, just like inserting a 1 into a, into a regular arithmetic uh, equation, it, multiplying by 1, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to multiply there by, by the identity matrix in the middle. And then I am going to represent the identity matrix I. I know that I is also equal to B times B to the minus 1, B, 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 B inverse, okay? Um, because that's, again, by the definition of the inverse, these, these two statements uh, are, the, are saying telling me the same thing. So instead of I, I'm going to write uh, B, B inverse, and then this will be A inverse, and that's still equal to I. Now I'm going to group these, and I'm going to group them in this manner, A, B, B inverse, A inverse, like that. That is still equal to I. Okay, now think about what I have. I have one matrix times another, and that's equal to the identity matrix. But that's exactly what it means for this thing here, this thing here then must be the inverse of this thing here. Okay, so that tells me right away that, here I'm even going to circle this, try to add it, this is not, to, it tells me that this thing right here must be A, B inverse. Because inverses are unique, and I have a situation where I take blob A, B, and I multiply it by something else, this blob, and I get i. So that blob, this one here, must be the inverse. So there I'm done. a, b inverse is b inverse times a inverse. Done. Okay, similarly how we did with the uh, transpose, let us expand uh, a times b times c uh, inverse. Okay, let's have a look at what that looks like. Um, a, B, C inverse. Now I'm going to think of this this way. A, B times C inverse. I'm going to use what I just proved above. That's going to have to be C inverse times A, B inverse. And then I'm going to use what I just proved again. And I'm done. Okay, you can just keep using this. Uh, um, method over and over again and uh, that's fine now we have we have to just be a little bit uh, cautious if if a product of matrices is singular i.e it doesn't have an it doesn't they do, the product like if the product abc did not have an inverse it was singular then that would tell us at least one of the matrices, in this case A, B, or C, is singular. Okay?
All right, and then we have the very happy uh, situation in the two by two case where we can compute this thing very quickly. That is not gonna be such a happy situation uh, in the larger dimension uh, matrices, but for the two by two, uh, calculating what we're gonna come to call the determinant and calculating the inverse uh, is very easy. And uh, uh, we sometimes uh, refer to this as uh, Kramer's rule. Okay, so we, here we have a two by two matrix with any entries, A, B, C, and D. And uh, first we have a test right away to see if it's singular. So if um, AD, uh, the product AD minus the product BC is zero, then A is singular. Uh, if it's not, uh, sorry, if it's, yeah, if it's zero, it's singular. If it's not zero, if it's not zero, then we can immediately write down the inverse. And it is this thing right here. And okay, we don't have to make any calculations. Uh, this quantity, um, AD minus BC, is called the determinant of A. Okay, this is going to be important. Determinants are very important. Okay, so let's uh, let's see if we can now use this new piece of knowledge, Kramer's rule, and see if we can calculate the inverse of A and the inverse of C. So um, I'll do A first. So let's take A. I'm going to use Kramer's rule here to write down what the inverse of A is. So the first thing I write 1 over, that's what I'm doing this part right here, 1 over AD times BC. That is 5 times 3 minus 8 times 2. And then I write uh, the matrix, uh, I, put, I put element D here, 3. I put element A here, 5. And then I put negative signs on the other two negative eight and negative two. And then I'm gonna just do a little bit of arithmetic here. I, I see that this thing here comes out to be minus one. This, this scalar quantity at the front is minus one. Then I multiply that by every element in the matrix because that's how scalar multiplication works. And I get this. Okay, so I, I claim that this is a, um, a to the minus one, this guy right here, inverse of A. I'm gonna check. I'm going to check by taking A, multiplying it by what, I, what I've computed here, which I think is A inverse. I'm going to make this calculation. Matrix multiplication. So the first, I take row 1 into column 1, and I get 5 times minus 3 plus 8 times 2. That is 1. You do the other calculations yourself. You will see that this comes out to uh, the identity matrix. So I indeed, this thing right here is A inverse. So Kramer's rule. This is really handy on the two by two case. It's fast. Uh, it's uh, easy to do. Uh, put this into your head. Never forget it again. It's a little bit like knowing the quadratic formula. Okay, let's take a look if we can uh, try to find what C uh, to the minus one is. So I would proceed along the same way. I would, I would, I would say, okay, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go AD minus BC, 9 times 0 minus 7 times 0. And I see, uh-oh, the determinant is 0. Like that, that number in the denominator there, AD minus BC is 0. 1 divided by 0, we have disaster, right? <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, I mean, you can maybe see now why we... We say it's singular. We have sort of get a singularity uh, in this kind of calculation. So uh, we say here now, we, we've stopped the calculation and we say C is singular. It does not have an inverse. Okay. You're not going to find an inverse. Uh, just a little bit of notation. Uh, we use this new word determinant. And so we would say it this way, the determinant of A, we might write it like that. And sometimes we'll write it like this with the straight bracket, the determinant of A, we'll, we will, this also means determinant of A. And then we would compute that as 15 times three minus eight times two, and that is equal to minus one. So we say debt A, and then just the single, the single bar like that uh, we, we means determinant as well. Okie dokie, let's uh, keep going. Uh, we can take powers of matrices. So, I mean, just like as uh, numbers, we, we have like two to the zero is the multiplicative identity one. We have a to the zero is i. Uh, if we take powers, a to the n a matrix, and to the nth power, we mean we multiply it together n times. Uh, if it's invertible, if a is invertible, 
then we can define the negative powers. We're going to be here with integer powers. Uh, the exponent laws are as for numbers. So that's what these are here, the exponent laws. So just notice that the exponent laws are as for numbers. Okay, so we've got uh, uh, some properties here. Again, let me encourage you to take an example and, and do the calculations and then sort of see how this is working and, and see that these things are applying. So if you take the inverse of the inverse, you get back to where you started from. Okay, um, if a to the n uh, is invertible, then the inverse of a to the n is a inverse to the n. Uh, if k is a non-zero uh, scalar, then k times k times a all inverse is 1 over k a inverse. We're just going to um, uh, check that last property, see if it's true. Okay, so let us just take k a like that and uh, um, take, so I'm just going to do this, I'm just going to take k a and uh, multiply it by k to the minus 1 a to the minus 1. Remember k is a number. Okay, so we have the property that k times k to the minus 1 is the number 1. So let me do that. I'm going to have k a k to the minus 1 a to the minus 1 and that will be equal to k k to the minus 1 a a to the minus 1. So I, I'm, I'm moving this guy over. Why can I do that? It's a scalar and we saw that uh, that we can um, change the order with the scalar. Okay, now uh, look at this. What does this equal? Well, this, that's equal to 1 and that is the identity matrix. So this is 1 times the identity matrix, which is the identity matrix. So what did I start with here? Uh, Ka, I have showed that Ka times uh, k to the minus 1, a to the minus 1 is equal to i. Okay, That means that this thing right here, just like in my argument previously, that means that that thing right there is k, this has to be ka minus 1. Okay. So now I've got what I wanted. Uh, ka minus 1 is equal to k to the minus 1, a to the minus 1. k is scalar. This does not hold if k is a matrix. Okay, k is a scalar. Let's let's really emphasize that on this in this one that we just showed. Okay. All right. Uh, next uh, thing, we'll just uh, uh, with a bit of algebra with the with the matrices. We're going to expand uh, a plus b all squared, and so that looks like this: a plus b all squared, and that looks like this: uh, a plus b multiplied by a plus b. And what I do is a uh, usual sort of thing. I go A times A, A times B, B times A, and uh, B times B. And that looks like this. Uh, A squared plus AB plus BA plus B squared. And that, folks, is where you stop. Do not combine. You know, if these were numbers, we would be combining. Do not combine. Do not combine. Because AB not equal to BA. So you mustn't write that as 2AB. That would be uh, not correct. I want to try to avoid things that are not correct. Okay, uh, just a little bit more to go here. Uh, we can consider evaluating a polynomial at a matrix. So we, we're, what we're doing is here, we're considering the argument to the function right here, that was X, the argument to be a matrix as opposed to a variable, uh, a number X. So if we decide to do that, then we say that the polynomial evaluated at matrix A is A0 times I, that's the identity matrix, and then everything else sort of flows as you would expect. Okay, and that we call that the matrix polynomial uh, in A. So here's a, here's a matrix A, and here's a, a polynomial, uh, x squared plus 3x plus 1. What is P of A? So I write it this way, P of A is the identity matrix. Okay, so here I'm looking at a situation for, uh, for this polynomial here. 
this polynomial here, I'm looking at a situation where a0 is equal to 1, a1 is equal to 3, and a2 is also equal to 1. Okay, so I, I will then write this like this, um, i plus 3 times a plus 1 times a squared. And now I can evaluate this. I'm going to skip over some of the steps here, but it's going to be like this. 1, 0, 0, 1, that is i, plus 3 times a, plus a squared. There it is. Okay, I, 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 I can go through and make all those computations, and if I don't make arithmetic mistake, I, go, I got this. Uh, I, I did not check this with a computer algebra system, so it, it, there's possibility of an error, but if I did that arithmetic, that's what I got. If that you don't get that, check uh, again, and then if you deduce, uh, especially if you check with Symbol Lab or something that I've made a mistake and not you, then let's get a comment on there and, and fix it. But if I've not done any arithmetic mistakes, that is what I've got. Okay, there's a few properties here uh, of this thing. That is, if you've got uh, a polynomial as a, as a product of two other polynomials, uh, then you can evaluate the polynomial at A as the product of the two polynomials individually evaluated at A, and you also have this property uh, happening here. So perhaps uh, concoct yourself an example. Okay, try an example and, and see if it works. Let me just re-emphasize that, in general, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Okay, uh, final thing that to say, and that is, uh, if A is invertible, that is, it has an inverse, then A transpose is also invertible, and A transpose inverse is equal to A inverse transpose. Okay, we already have shown uh, earlier that, uh, so this is, has come previously, that A, B transpose is B transpose, A transpose. So let us now consider uh, this. Consider uh, consider A transpose multiplied by A to the minus 1 transpose. Okay, by this property right here, we know that this is equal to a to the minus 1 a transpose. And that is equal to i transpose, which is i. Now consider a to the minus 1 transpose times a transpose. We know that that is equal to a times a to the minus 1 transpose. That is also I transpose or I. These are equal. That and that are equal. Okay, I is equal to I. That means that uh, A transpose A to the minus 1 transpose is equal to A to the minus 1. Let's be a little bit neater here. Uh, A to the minus 1 transpose. A transpose. Okay. Uh, let's see here. That is equal to I. Okay. So these two things are equal here. So that means these two things are equal here, and both of them are equal to I. What is that telling me? That is telling me that. Uh, uh, this is the uh, inverse of that, and that is the inverse of that, and that is that tells me that a transpose minus one is equal to a to the minus one transpose. Okay, uh, that's done. Ah, that in fact, that not just is that done, but this entire lecture is uh, done. So that was uh, section, what are we at? Uh, 3.2, I believe. So uh, we'll be back with the next installment. Uh, hold your breath. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.